Today, I'll break down the exact three-phase blueprint you can use to land your first six-figure data science job in under six months. I've used this exact system to mentor a lot of people, get data science jobs, and this is based on my decade of experience working as a data scientist for companies like Meta, Cisco, and Wells Fargo, where I've not only built AI applications, but I've also been on the hiring side so I know what companies want. So stick with me till the end of this video and I'll give you the exact step-by-step -step framework that cuts through the noise and focuses on the 20% of the things which gets you 80% of the job offers. So first, let me emphasize that this six-month blueprint is not a claim, it's not a magic. It is a focused system which has worked for a lot of people I've mentored. And it is possible only because the opportunity is massive. According to US Bureau of Labor and Statistics, Data science is one of the fastest growing fields in tech. The field is projected to grow by 35% in the next 10 years, which is a staggering growth. And it also reflects in the kind of salaries data scientists are taking. According to Glassdoor, the median salary for data scientists in the US is $145,000. And it is about three times higher than the national average, which means that companies are willing to pay a lot of money to people who have the right kind of talent. But the mistake I see a lot of people do is that they focus on breadth rather than depth. They try to learn a little bit of everything fancy, but do not have enough depth into any one skill. And that is the exact strategy you would want to use if you want your job to be replaced by AI. Because AI is a very good generalist. It knows a decent amount of about pretty much everything. So in this day and age, if you want to survive, you have to be a T-shaped data scientist where you know a little bit about most of the stuff and then you take one thing and then you go deep and i'm going to explain this with the three pillar system so that your approach is targeted it is focused and it helps you get the results first i want to talk a little bit about signal to noise my undergrad was in telecommunication engineering and this is one of the technical subjects which i've learned there and the core findings, they sort of stayed with me till now, which are essential. And then there are things which are useless, but they still sort of accompany that signal. And these are things called noise. And it is a challenge for most people to differentiate what is signal versus noise. And what I'm seeing in 95% of the applications currently, which most jobs receive, they are full of noise. They're full of generic resume lines. They are full of useless certificates, which people have gathered because they have watched some course on Udemy. And they're full of GitHub portfolios, which are just built on some toy dummy data set, which everyone can do, which now AI can do with one line of prompt. That is all noise. Everyone can do it. So when hiring managers are looking at resumes, they try to sort of filter through that noise and try to get the signal. Now, what is the signal? especially the signal hiring managers are looking for. Well, if you look at the hiring happening from the lens of hiring managers, hiring managers, when they're trying to hire someone, they want to bring in someone who could reduce their headache or even if they cannot reduce their headache, at least they do not increase their headache because hiring managers are busy people. They have a lot going on. An ideal candidate would have enough knowledge about whatever that business problem is that hiring manager is trying to solve, that person can just come in and start helping solve that problem for the hiring manager. So when hiring manager looks at resumes, which are all general, the signal they're getting is that this person is going to come on board. He or she has no idea about the business problem they're trying to solve. So they know some tools, but knowledge of tools is becoming less and less valuable with every passing day because AI can write a lot of code for you. So the hiring manager has to spend a lot of time trying to teach you what's going on and it will increase their headache. Whereas if someone has previously worked either at a previous workplace or through portfolio projects which they have built, which is trying to solve the same kind of problem which the hiring manager currently has, then that is a signal hiring manager is trying to look at in all the resumes they are scanning. Do you have the kind of experience so that when you come on the job from the very get-go, you help solve that problem without creating more problems. And we can increase that kind of signal in your resume by focusing on this three pillar framework, which is based on foundation. We know a little bit of theory so that we could start building something. This is the portfolio project, which is about an actual business use case which most businesses have. And then you try to solve and demonstrate your skill around it. And then you network 
with people who are already working in the field, working on that kind of problem. And this does not end here because you use that knowledge which you have acquired through networking and then you go back and then you further improve your foundations which is your theoretical knowledge. You again come to your portfolio, either you improve it or you build another one and then you go back and again network and demonstrate what you are. So this is what the exact three phase playbook looks like. For the first two months, you can focus on the foundations. And I'm very deliberately using the term foundation because there are a lot of things, a lot of shiny tools which you can try to learn. But foundations is the main thing you should be focusing on because that is what is needed for you to understand how you can solve some problem with the data. And foundations generally include your knowledge about Python, your knowledge about SQL, you should have some understanding of statistics so that you know how to run A-B testing and what is statistical significance, etc. And then you need to know some machine learning. And again, you can just learn top 10 machine learning algorithms and have a basic understanding of how they work and that is all you need. And I think for someone who is not totally new to tech, two months is a good enough period of time for you to master these foundations. Then the next step is that of portfolio building. And this is the main step. That's why I've allocated like three months on it. But hopefully you won't spend entire three months building something and then going to the next step of networking. You build something maybe in a month, which is impressive enough. And then you try to network with a bunch of people. Just try to get some feedback on what your project looks like, how you can further improve it, what people are actually doing while they're implementing that kind of project in industry. And then you go back and try to further improve it. And then once you have a portfolio project, which is good enough, then you go in a more networking mode. You create a one pager document or a short five minute loom video explaining what you have done. You create an impressive niche resume, which mainly establishes you as an expert in that specific niche. For example, don't just market yourself as a data scientist. You can be a marketing data analyst who have deep expertise in how to reduce share. Or you are a healthcare data scientist who have deep expertise in, in customer segregation. So you create that niche resume and then you find niche jobs and then you start applying for those. But the core thing here is this your portfolio project centered learning and this approach is very different from the tutorial based approach where i would have said you spend three months trying to learn pandas spend one month trying to learn sql all of that i'm just trying to ask you to learn a little bit of fundamentals and then further improve your learning by building something so in this case your learning life cycle looks something like this you define a problem, then based on that problem, you try to learn a skill, then you apply that skill in the portfolio project, and then you document and share that portfolio project. And based on that, you further go back and try to define a problem which is even more nuanced or even better than the previous one you have defined. And if all of this looks very overwhelming, I have a very quick three minute assessment test, which is absolutely free of cost in the description below. The goal of that assessment test is to help you understand what is the number one bottleneck you currently have so that you could cut through the noise and just focus on that one bottleneck so that once that thing is improved, then maybe you can retake that quiz and assessment and understand what is the next bottleneck you have to address and then you can keep doing it till you are fully job ready. So let's look at the same problem from a slightly different lens. And I'm a big fan of Charlie Munger and one thing he used to advocate for was that always invert the problem at hand. So instead of saying, how can I get a job in another six months, let's try to look at the inversion perspective of what can guarantee that you don't get a job in the next six months. So when we flip that framing of the problem, I think there are three things you can do to guarantee that you never get a job. One thing is that you keep Try to chase the new shiny tools which are coming every other day. And then you try to learn a little bit of those. And without having a very coherent understanding of how these tools work when they come together to solve a business problem. And without having much foundational or deep knowledge about those tools. That is the number one thing you can do. The second mistake you can make is that you just focus on theory. And you have no idea how to actually build and implement something. And you just have some theoretical understanding of how does 
decision tree work and what is entropy and all those things without ever implementing something for a business use case. And the last thing you can do is that you just hide your work. You never apply for a job. You never uh, reach out to someone who can help you get a job. So these are the three things you can do to guarantee that you never land a data science job in the next six months or ever. Now, if we can correct these things, then there is a pretty good chance that you can actually land a data science job. And this is exactly the approach I've been explaining here. The first one is that you focus on the foundational tools, not just everything, just focus on the foundations, things which are used pretty much for every single job. There was a bird, according to which 91% data scientists they use Python, 88% of them use SQL. So at least these two things, you know that pretty much every data scientist use, and then some statistics and machine learning knowledge. So that is the foundation you have to focus on. Then you do not just focus on theory, you learn just enough theory so that you can actually practically build something. So this is where your portfolio project building is very important. And lastly, you do not hide you actually actively apply and you actually network and you reach out to as many people as you can while proving to them that you know this niche, you know this business problem and you have worked on your own trying to solve it as much as you can so that next time those people are hiring for a data scientist role, you are top of mind for them. So again, enough theory in terms of concrete action steps. One, take that assessment test. It will take you three minutes. You have no excuse. It's free you'll get the results immediately. The second is that this is your seven-day action plan. You identify one niche. What is one business problem that you want to solve? And this could be based on your personal interest. It could be based on some prior expertise you have developed or someone in your family or friends. Maybe they know a field and there are opportunities using data to help facilitate that kind of business problem. Or use ChatGPT and Google Gemini to brainstorm on what that could one problem could be. And then around that business problem, you build one project. Again, I'm focusing on depth versus breadth. Instead of creating some very surface level, a lot of projects, just create one and go very, very deep, as deep as you can get. And then start and share publicly. Create a Loom video, create a one page document, share with people, this is what I've done. What else can I do? Do you have any feedback for me? And based on that, at least you can build the initial momentum you need so that by the end of six months, you are not only job ready, but you actually have a job offer in your hand. I hope you like the content of this video. Thank you so much for watching.